but we ask you to be courteous to your neighbors and respectful to those who are here to become informed. So the first thing I want to do is ask you to please silence your cell phones. Or turn them off, either way. But if you do get a call, then please don't answer it until you get outside of that door in the back, okay? Okay, no candidate or campaign staffer has seen the questions. In fact, nobody's seen the questions except Joanne. So uh, there are uh, chat room questions that are in front of me that people have already sent in, uh, but they will not be asked until the end, and that's only if there is time. Uh, candidates may stand or remain seated to give opening and closing statements, and the candidates were given the time limits and order the program in advance. The candidates just drew numbers, and they will introduce themselves in that order, and each candidate will have two minutes to introduce themselves. This will be followed by one hour of questioning. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer the question. You can see, gentlemen, that it's on the back wall. Uh, we are not looking for bumper sticker sound bites. The questions are designed to bring out core principles and values as well as the candidate's intent for the office. There will be no additional time given for rebuttals until the end where candidates will have three minutes each to rebut and then to bring up a new topic or to finish a point on a previous question. Time limits will be enforced, and if you are in mid-sentence and need to complete a sentence, you may complete your sentence, but don't start another one or another paragraph or another chapter. <laughs> so the straw poll, straw poll voting rules will be announced after the candidates portion of the program concludes. Eleanor Bigby, she's at the back working on it. The straw poll chair will be at the time at that time come forward and announce those rules and the voting procedures. Okay, um, before we get started and uh, letting the candidates introduce themselves, we need to have a conversation, uh, a little a civics lesson 101 about what the Attorney General of the State of Texas is responsible for and where he or she might get or does get their authority. The Attorney General of Texas is the chief lawyer and legal officer for the state of Texas. According to the Texas Constitution, the Attorney General defends the laws and the Constitution of the state of Texas, represents the state in litigation, and approves public bond issues. The Attorney General is a powerful and influential office in Texas government. In addition to the primary role as chief legal counsel to the state of Texas, the Attorney General influences public policy and affairs by serving as legal counsel to all boards and agencies of state government, issuing legal opinions on proposed and existing laws and regulations, and defending challenges to state laws and suits against both state agencies and individual employees of the state. Other duties include representing the director of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice in appeals from criminal convictions in federal courts. The Office of the Attorney General's Law Enforcement Division employs a staff of sworn commissioned state peace officers that investigate public corruption, violent crime, human trafficking, money laundering, Medicaid provider fraud, mortgage fraud, election violations, cybercrime, fugitive apprehension, inve investigate other special classes of offenses and conduct criminal investigations at the request of local prosecutors. In addition, the Law Enforcement Division of the AG's Office is the state's liaison to Interpol and the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. The office is also charged with proceedings to secure child support through its child support division. An increasingly important role of the state's attorney general is to stand as a roadblock to unconstitutional federal overreach and to defend and advance state's rights guaranteed under the Ninth and Tenth Amendments to the U.S. Constitution. The attorney general's office sits at a unique intersection of law, politics, administration, regulation, and enforcement. As such, the Attorney General should possess a sharp legal mind, have a deep understanding of the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights, 
the Texas Constitution and exhibit the highest moral character, display, display a wise and judicious nature, and be administratively adept. The Attorney General's powers, term of office, qualifications, and installation are established by Article 4 of the Texas Constitution. The AG is elected to a four-year term and currently is not subject to term limits. There are several divisions to the Attorney General's office. There is a cr criminal justice division, which includes Crime Victim Services Division, Criminal Investigations Division, Criminal Prosecutions Division, Medicaid Fraud Control Unit, 